Good morning, everyone, and good evening in India and Europe. Migraine is the third most common disease in the world, with 2% of the global population that's affected by it. Is there any research or evidence on natural therapies for migraine? We are going to talk to one of the top Ayurvedic researchers in the world who has done clinical trials to showcase the efficacy of Ayurveda for migraine. I am Amita from Nourish Talk, a global platform for natural and holistic therapies. I am honored to introduce all of you to Padma Shri Vaidya Balindu Prakashji, who's going to share his research on migraine with us. Welcome, Vaidya Balindu Prakashji. Hello, everyone. So let's uh, get um, <clears throat> just let's just start with the definition of classical migraine because people get confused: migraine versus headache. Hello, Belinda Prakashji, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, are you talking, or I should talk? No, no. Please, please start talking. Please, let's just start with uh, what exactly is migraine. Okay. Okay. So, hello everyone. Today I welcome all of you in my talk on migraine, which is based on my clinical practice. I practice in India and we have a law that we can prepare our own medicine and give it to the patient. Uh, we don't sell medicine in the market, but these are available in our clinical practice. And while I'm doing it, I document my practice and combine modern diagnostic with Ayurvedic treatment protocol. So first of all, I would like to make you familiar about the migraine. Migraine is a very old disease and which started from Hippocratic and initially it came from the fumes of the stomach and then in Italic Latin it was called hemicrania. Hemicrania means half of the head when the pain is there. But this theory has came to an end in 2006 when International Headache Society Diagnostic Criteria found it is an autonomic gastrointestinal and neurological disorder. Prior to that it was neurological disorder. So now it is autonomic, gastrointestinal, and neurological, and this is very near to, very close to our hypothesis because we strongly believe that migraine, though it is a neurological, but the genesis is in the GIT. Okay, so moving on. And when we talk about migraine, so there are many headaches, but migraine is 90% of all headaches. And right now, nearly 22 uh, crore, 220 million people suffer with it. And in USA, uh, in 2006, when I presented my work in London, there were 30 million migraine patients. But by 2016, the migraine patient in USA had gone up to 38 million. And similarly, WHO, which has ranked migraine among debility causing disease, as 19th number, now in, in recent years, it has ranked to seven debility causing disease. So the number of uh, migraine and intensity of migraine is going worldwide. And the most uh, pitiable situation about it is affect the people in their uh, in their productive age group. The most of the people who get it, they are 18 to 45. And uh, like women are already overburdened in their personal, social, and family life, but migraine also burden them more because out of four patients, three women are suffering with migraine. So why do you think, uh, uh, that it has gone up? You think it's due to the stress levels that has gone up or uh, what is the theory behind it? Uh, I think uh, there are many theories about the cause and uh, cause about the migraine. I will not say treatment because uh, people don't know what is the exact cause. But uh, if you ask me, I think uh, most of the women are uh, so caring for others that they ignore their own health. They don't eat on time, they don't, they don't sleep on time. And obviously, they are more stressed uh, to keep away stress of other people. Okay. So let's talk about the global um, prevalence uh, for migraine. Is there any particular country that has more versus the other? See, usually people say that diseases are... Um, reflection of poverty and illiteracy. But if you see this uh, atlas, it is a migraine atlas. And this is a migraine atlas talk about developing country, developed countries like France, Germany, America, UK, Japan, 
because these countries are full of technology and resources. And here, nearly 10 to 15 percent population has been suffering with it. You can see that tiny um, this map of India, and there is no migraine patient from there. But it is not true because Indian uh, Medical Research Council so far did not make any survey. So I showed it because I this is the current scenario. So this is the disease of the world, especially of the developed world. So this I wanted to show here. Sure. So let's just uh, start with, uh, if someone is suffering from headache, and which all of us sometimes do, but how do we know it's a migraine? Yes, so you see, there is no diagnosis for migraine, like no blood test, no images. So whatever the tests are done, they are done to rule out other disease of the neurology. And uh, in absence of any images or blood tests, then International Headache Society Diagnostic Criteria they set up an interview, which is called International Headache Society Diagnostic Criteria for Migraine. So I will talk about it. That uh, first of all, the first and foremost is next slide, please. Uh, the first and foremost is the idiopathic. Idiopathic means without any cause, five attack, minimum five attack in a year. Like a person has one week before, then one month. So it should be scattered. It should not be in one go. So minimum five episodic uh, attack of uh, headache without any cause. Like there should be no fever, nothing. So it is called idiopathic, without any cause. Minimum five. It can be more. Second thing, the, when the headache comes, if it headache, headache lasts uh, less than four hours and get uh, persist after 72 hours, it is not migraine. So any headache which is more than five times episodic and do, do not get away less than four hours and do not persist more than 72 hours. That is the second characteristic. Then the third is pain characteristic is four out of or two out of four if they are there. The so first is unilateral or bilateral. What is the lo location of the migraine? So it can be unilateral or bilateral on both sides. I think bilateral is missing in this slide. So it is unilateral or bilateral. Second is pulsating, throbbing pain. Third is moderate to severe. And fourth thing it should bother. And if they do any physical work, it should aggravate further. So out of these four characteristics, if a patient has two with one and two positive, then curing attack, one out of two, either nausea or vomiting. Second, photophobia or phonophobia. Photophobia means uh, the patient should not uh, like light and should not like any noise. So one out of two is available then they are suspected for migraine provided they don't have any secondary cause for these symptoms. And if the secondary cause is available, then it is not the cause of migraine. So it is a very clearly defined that a migraine patient should have minimum five attack in a year episodic, second four to seven two hours duration of headache, third urilateral or bilateral pulsating in nature or nausea, vomiting, photophobia, etc. So all the patients who are diagnosed in the worldwide, they are diagnosed following this International Headache Society Diagnostic Criteria for Migraine. All right. So let's now, talk about... Now <coughs> the now question comes, ki how to assess its intensity? So again, as I said, there is no thermometer, no barometer to find out. Everything is based on, uh, on the interview. And this interview should be very smart interview. It should not be forceful that you should ask patient to pinpoint here, let them talk, let them express. And this is the vast scoring to assess the intensity of pain. And you can see the pain is one to 10. So zero means no pain. One to three means mild. Mild means a person is having headache, but can do uh, basic duties. And that is not called migraine. Migraine means moderate to severe. So 4 to 10, if it is there, so moderate means 4 to 6, it is bothering. Severe means it is patient is confined to bed, it is crying, and 9 to 10, unconscious. That time, there's an emergency, ambulance comes. So this way, patient is diagnosed for the intensity of the pain, and when the treatment is given, they are assessed for the adequacy of the treatment. So this is called vast scoring. And the next is, Migraine-induced gypsum lady assessment score. This is a questionnaire. 
which talks about how many days in last 90 days you could not do your office job full day then how many days you could not do half more than half day of the job other than the previous job similarly household work for the whole month how many days you could not do household work then how many days in last 90 days one person could do half of the work and then social that how migraine affected your social activity there's a birthday party there's a marriage party or other party picnic they have to take it off so based on this there is a scoring this is called midas scoring and they say if this is a more than 10 more than 10 then they should be treated properly so if this interview is done zero day and after 90 days to again see the effect of uh, migraine treatment on individuals like So let's switch that uh, <clears throat> discussion a little bit uh, on what are the current treatments, um, you know, in conventional medicine that, that exist for someone who has a migraine? Uh, broadly, migraine treatment is categorized into two abortive means. The person is having pain and they use any painkiller, whatever suits to them, as advised by their doctors. So that is called abortive. And for that, the number of uh, drugs are there. And second is prophylactic. Prophylactic means when the pain is coming, they're taking, but it is not helping them, then doctor put them on prophylaxis. You take it on daily basis, whether you have pain or not. And when there's a pain intensity, you can take abortive. So basically these are there, but all these medicines, next please. All these medicines when taken for long, they cause what they do severe side effects. And as I said initially, that migraine uh, diagnostic criteria, uh, the same criteria if it lasts more than 15 days in a month for more than one year, that is called chronic migraine. That a person if having more than four hours pain for 15 days in a month, that is called chronic migraine. But nowadays, an, another category of migraine is emerged, and that is emerged from the treatment because nobody knows what is the treatment. So more use of abortive treatment and Prophylaxis treatment is causing medication overuse headache, MOH. So that is their medication overuse headache for that. And sometimes uh, these uh, medication overuse headache, in spite of taking the treatment, it is called refractive migraine, which will be our own main focus because the patient of refractive migraine, when it goes to the neurologist, that means he has taken two preventive therapy and abortive therapy, and both have failed. And then doctors say, as you cannot change your stars, you cannot change your parents, you have to live with it. So that we cure with IVG treatment. And before I proceed further, I will say, what is migraine into Ayurveda? Uh, Ayurveda has 13 types of headache, but migraine is not from the headache. I, in my practice, I found that the shloka, Brahmo, Brahmo means confusion, Murcha means simple, Aruchi means anorexia, Shardi means nausea, alasya means fatigue, and headache. When headache is combined, all, all of these things, this is called Shresh Vipitta in Ayurveda, which has nothing to do with neurology. And in these cases, I found when you touch your abdomen of the patients, so they have inflamed gastrointestinal tract, they have inflamed gallbladder. So I feel migraine is the outcome of deranged pitta due to irregular eating habits, diet and lifestyle, so which affects the functional medicine. So it dis disturbs the functioning of our gallbladder and colon, and that reflexes when it affects our neurosystem, a person feels a uh, headache. One more thing I would like to say here, the scientists are unable to find out why a migraine patient feels better after vomiting. So because there is the indigestion in the system, either they get improved digestion by sleeping, so most of the patients, when they get medicine, they sleep and they feel better. Or if they throw up, they get better. Next, please. So we developed a treatment protocol for that. So the as the patient who are having it, they have a different way of living. And as, uh, I was wondering, given America, which is a high-tech country with so many resources, so many systems, why patients are increasing? But uh, I, I find one a very interesting thing in America, 
if they follow system for everything but when the, it comes to your body they don't follow any system they don't eat at time 24 hours you have to take home take away you can eat any time you can sleep any time you can work any time you can holiday any time but our body is not like that so when you do not follow a systematic plan maybe you eat at 8 then eat on 8 it is not that one day you eat on 9 second day 11 or 12 so when a patient come to us we make sure that their biological watch works properly so they are given three meal and three snacks on particular time and it is a balanced diet it is not ayurveda vata pitta kapha it is a balanced diet like 1800 to 2200 calories and eight hours sleep because ayurveda talks about sleep ahar nidra brahmacharya the sleep uh, food and our personal life they are important for healthy living so eight hours sleep and then there's a combination of four medicines but these all medicines they don't have any painkillers they are aimed to restore the disturbed functional disorder of gi so these medicines um, you manufacture them in your facility in uttarakhand right and, 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 yes. Or, or, or yes i prepare these medicines in my uh, pharmacy but these medicines are available for treatment only these are not off the shelf it is there is a medicine there is a doctor there is a patient and there is a attendant and we follow that uh, basic concept of ayurveda that a vet an attendant a patient and the medicine so these medicines work so in my further slide i will tell what are these medicine and how this is going to do but before that i will tell you very interesting theory that how did it come to me i am an ayurvedic doctor and i will i must confess that during my graduation i never came across with the word migraine but i knew migraine is a bad word but i recall my early days of practice when my father was no more who was already a doctor one lady was brought to me who had migraine and such a big fight with her I, she had migraine for 20 years she had been to all allopathic doctors ayurvedic doctors homeopathic doctors and unani doctors in mere my birthplace so when the lady who brought to us brought the patient to me and she said she has migraine i said what will i do i don't know anything but no forget it you take the pulse and she insisted me i was nervous because i i thought i knew that migraine is a bad thing and it is not curable but when she insisted me i took the pulse and very surprisingly the patient had pitta dominant pulse pitta means liver and gallbladder then i checked her abdomen and i found there was a tenderness at certain point and then i gave the medicine and my guess my diagnosis or i think the destiny uh, she this lady improved miraculously and that made me famous in merit that a very young vaidya could treat the patient successfully <laughs> so this was the uh, incidental and forceful treatment to me and then i found it is very easy and one more thing i learned in my medical practice by experts that if a problem is big that means cause is small and if a problem is small cause is big so i feel that the present uh, generation of scientists and doctors are going into wrong direction by correlating migraine with neurology and here i would like to say one more thing that in 1783 it was dr tissot who was a swiss doctor who has distinguished migraine from other headache and he said migraine is the outcome of the reflexes of gallbladder stomach and uterus but that time world was under the influence of british and darwin had become famous so darwin father has taken the lead for the all issues in the world and he said no no it is not a swiss doctor it is a supra orbital neurological disorder and mm -hmm. very funnily since then world is only following the same path that is called uh, neurological disorder but our findings are very much to the finding of tissot and i should mention his name because i am not the first one who is talking about gallbladder it was professor tissot who has done it in 1783 so i must i should i did not copy from him but when i did it and i was i was putting my paper in international forum i found his work so it is my uh, utmost duty to recognize the work of the people who have done before so later on i treated uh, this patient to many people and this was the retrospective i was treating them and i was getting benefit and then we came to a prospective study in 2002 in a ayurvedic college in india 
and where we treated patient under said protocol. And from this protocol, we took it to the world. We presented in London, in International Symposium on Migraine, where I was given membership of International Headic Society. The second question comes about the safety. So these medicines have gone into safety profile, uh, following OECD guidelines, they're absolutely safe. Then pharmacologically, while these medicines are showing effect on migraine patient, on pharmacological parameter, they do not work at all. So because they don't have any painkiller, anti-inflammatory, sedative, anti-epileptic uh, uh, therapy uh, effect. But uh, this medicine then further subjected to a neurology, uh, a randomized clinical trial under a neurology expert in the Premier Institute of India, called All India Institute of Medical Sciences. In the next slide, I will narrate that result to you. So meanwhile, whatever we were doing from 2002, to 2010, we made our presentation in London, we made presentation in Sweden and in America, and we were the only Ayurvedic person in the world who was invited in, uh, in to speak with or stand with the top neurologists of the world, and we also presented our uh, working in two journals published from India and Korea. So, so as I, uh, yes, yeah. carry on. I just wanted to ask one thing on the medication that you have, uh, you manufacture now in your facility in Uttarakhand, uh, in your hospital, in your pharmacy. Are these uh, medication available anywhere else? Or they're only available uh, through your pharmacy right now? We prepare medicine for our own use because there's a law in India that an Ayurvedic physician can prepare medicine for the use in the clinical practice. So. It was initial practice. Now there are few doctors all across the country who get trained to treat migraine patient because very, very clear that we will not join the race of selling medicine. We will mm -hmm. join the, we will create an example of evidence-based practice. So whoever comes to us, when they give medicine, we give a protocol and they have to provide us the data back. We have a clinic in Delhi. They, yeah. they wanted to treat the patient. They took medicine from us but out of 40, they could not cure even a single one. So we closed it. So we are very particular that whoever patient is coming to us, they are desperate, they have faced anything, and we have a cure, we believe in us. So these medicines are available to the Ayurvedic doctors, and through Ayurvedic doctors, it goes to the patient. It is not out-the-counter medicine. Sure. Okay. Thank you for clarification. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. So here, Ayurvedic medicines, especially of mental origin, Safety is the biggest concern. People talk about it. And I think people should talk about it. So we have subjected these medicines with a leading pharmacological institute in Bombay and where it went to acute and subacute safety studies. And you can see here that at any dose, up to 10 times, which is the recommended dose, there was no acute and uh, subacute uh, toxic effect of this medicine. And in the next slide, I will show the toxicity studies of the 210 days. Here, animals are given 180 days medicine in different doses, and the last 30 days they are not given. So these medicines have shown complete safe profile. There is no side effect. And uh, so this is wonderful. It, this, first of all, it showed clinical efficacy in clinical practice. Then it showed uh, safety profile in animal model. I think which is must uh, to take the further step even if you go to FDA in future. So these all studies are the benchmarking uh, at the beginning of the recognition of the medicines. Now I was talking about this medicine works, but how does it work? So there are a few models called analgesic, anti-inflammatory, general CNS activity, anti-histaminic, anti-5-HT, general behavior. So these are few tests, so which was done under a pharmacologist of India who is a leading pharmacologist. And before this study came into existence, I made things clear to professor, professor, I'm doing this study because we want to know mode of action. But first of all, they have to follow the existing model. So it will be failure. Well, what? You say it works on migraine. I said it works on migraine, but there's no painkiller, nothing. It rectifies the system in the body. And I was right. There was no effect. So it can be called as negative. No, it was not negative report. 
it was a positive report because it was justifying our hypothesis. If it had been an analgesic, I did not do anything new. But here we are treating a migraine patient without having these properties which modern medicine has and they only cause side effects, they never cure it. So, next. So, by doing all these things, toxicological studies, pharmacological studies and our earlier presentation, we were making our base to take this treatment to the most uh, premier institute of the country called All India Medical Institute under the Department of Neurology. Because I'm not a neurologist. So if I treat a patient, even 100,000 patients, and they get better, nobody will uh, believe it. So to prove, to establish the proof, we have to do two arms, which is the modern medicine, and where one arm will get modern medicine, and one arm will get Ayurvedic medicine. So this study took two years to get approval from the institute, because this was the first example when an Ayurvedic treatment protocol was being studied in totality, and we took for 154 cases, was enrolled for refractive migraine, as you can see in the title, because these patients should have data. So our Indian patient usually who goes to government hospital, they don't maintain data. So the proof of diagnosis and proof of two months, two months therapy should be with them. So that's why it took one, four years to enroll the patient in a suit which receives nearly 500 cases in a, every year because our quality of data is so strong that nobody can doubt in this thing. And this funding, uh, unfortunately, we did not get support from the Ayush Ministry because whatever we are doing, it is not in the books. We did not get support from our Department of Science and Technology, but an unusual support came from a leading pharma company of India who gave us as a medical research without any, having any conflict of interest because they are not in Ayurveda, they are in allopathy. So they thought whatever we are doing is a medical research. So there was a philanthropy without any their personal interest. That is called if laboratory Mumbai. Next. So this is study, which was designed by the neurologist, it has different male and female, female than male. Age group was more than 18 to 62. History of uh, migraine was taken consideration that should have minimum one year and then maximum whatever it is. And frequency of uh, and intensity of the headache, as I said, should be more than six. Uh, Midas should be more than 10 and headache days. This was uh, all collected. This information was collected very much in the beginning. Next. And migraine is associated with four major things. Uh, there are patients who can have other symptoms also, but nausea, vomiting, photophobia, phonophobia are the more um, uh, major causes, major associated symptoms in migraine patients. But one thing was common in these patients that whoever came to our, uh, this uh, uh, study, whether in IVD group or adopathy group, they were painkiller dependent. They were taking painkillers every day. So when they joined program, their painkiller was taken off. They were only given off and on when there was a pain. So, so the painkiller was extremely, uh, it was uh, taken out completely or in between uh, you? No, I, will tell you I will tell you because they were painkiller okay. dependent. Okay. patient who were part of the study. So now I'm talking about enrollment, the patient who had their nausea, their vomiting. So mm -hmm. this was I'm talking about. No, no, go to back, go back, go back. Yeah, more this, back? so yes, this is the in the beginning. When they came to us, you can see 77, 77. So they had mm -hmm. nausea, 64 patient, vomiting. So, so this we have shown. He, when they came to us, that was the baseline. Now next slide. I see. I see what you're saying. The baseline was that, and yeah. after 120 days, so that's after what... 120 days, you can see that Ayurvedic group number went down from 64 to 22 in nausea. In allopathic group, 42 from 63. Here, 49 to 02, 51 to 08. Uh, photophobia, 67 to 26. So these are the broadly very visible difference are there that Ayurvedic group was showing, and the loss to follow was seen because in Ayurvedic group they were not taking. And in painkiller, so initially dropout was seven, and in uh, the group dropout was one. Next, please. And now we come to the conclusion that there are moderate to severe pain with need of medication, the group zero. And in allopathy group, 14 patients means 20% patients were getting rescue medicine, 
and it becomes symptom free. So refractory migraine, as I said in the beginning, doctor said there's no cure, you have to live with it. But Ayurvedic group could bring term cure, no symptom. So this is the first ever example in the world when the refractory migraine patient can say that we are symptom free and that was 20% in allopathy group zero. This is highly significant statistically. Next please. And these are the p-values, is statistically significant. Vas, Bidas, which I explained in the beginning, after 120 days, next. And similarly, when the treatment was stopped after 120 days, they were followed over 40, 60 days. So same thing, it was the sustainable effect. So we can say, next please. So this is the conclusion of the study signed by Professor Manjari Tripathi, who is working in the department of uh, a neurology at AIMS that Ayurvedic treatment was well tolerated by the patient without any adverse effect. The observation of the study indicated that Ayurveda has significant and sustainable effect in the prevalence of migraine. So this statement comes from the professor of neurology from Institute of uh, All India Medical Institute of India, which is the top post. There is nothing. So here we are able to show whatever we are doing in our clinical practice based on that. And now we are more strong, we are more convinced, we are more confident because whatever we are doing, it is the conviction of science, it is the backdrop of science, and it is the backing of the endorsement from the premium institute. And they did not endorse willingly because the data was so strong that they have to give it. And now this is our current scenario as I'm talking about it, this is called dissemination of information. So I thank you uh, to the knowledge.com for taking this uh, uh, dissemination of information to the masses. And second thing is capacity building, whoever the Ayurvedic doctors who are very keen to incorporate it in their respective practice. So we train them and we are setting up especially migraine clinics in conjunction with other Ayurvedic doctors and we are generating data. So we don't call it clinical trial, but we are showing the documentation of clinical practice of Ayurvedic physician from the different uh, area. We are backing of safety, we are backing of uh, chemistry, we are backing of uh, pharmacology, we are backing of uh, clinical trial. But besides, every day, we are every month, we are having more and more migraine patients to our clinics, which we are documented together. And uh, last and least, I want to establish what is the size between the gallbladder, between the GIT and this. So this would be a very big commitment, but we are trying, we are very uh, small people with the limited resources, but our aim is very clear, whatever we are able to see, what is the science behind it, if we are able to do, so that is our current scenario. So you, you want to, uh, you, are you uh, undertaking research right now to establish the connection between the gallbladder and, and, and the neurology or, or you are still thinking of doing the research? Now? No, no, this is, this is treating patient, helping patient is one thing. Second, treating other, uh, training other doctors, that is other thing. But our aim yeah. is very clear that we should establish the science behind our hypothesis. So you see, unfortunately, there is no animal model for migraine. So whatever we have to do, but when you talk about it, modern medicine, either gastroenterology or neurology. So they have not worked together. So gastroenterologist doesn't want to see neurologist and neurologist doesn't want to see a gastroenterologist. But our results are able to bring together because some of the doctors are doing it. And we have done some preliminary work on migraine patients. They were very surprised to see the inflammation, but I could not enthusiasm because as you know, India has everything, but India did not invent anything in the last 70 years. So we are making India, we are not innovation India. And I think current India is trying its best how to do it. So I hope in coming years, with the help of public, with the help of people like you, who are believing in work and helping us in promoting our work. And when we first help patients, and some of the patients come forward and they support us financially, they support us through infrastructure or through their contact. So that's our aim. We are working on that. But migraine is curable, I can say, from this the forum of nourishment document 
because nobody else in the world can say my grain is curable and it is not based on my hypothetical things. It is based on the fact because I have many cases. I have a case of a doctor who is a 59 years old orthopedic doctor from Rajasthan. When he came to us four years back, he was so bad that he was not able to wear any footwear. What footwear and migraine? What is the correlation? Are you mad? No, I'm not mad. Because this patient, when I have a painkiller, he had oral tips, then he was taking injection, then IV, and when there was no space in the hand, then he went to the legs. And when they were putting so much, such a toxic injection, he had wounds everywhere, his legs become so big, he was not able even to wear any footwear at that time. And then after the treatment, now he's playing tennis. Now he's playing, uh, yes. running around. There's no inflammation and this video is available on my YouTube channel. So it is not the one case, but I'm saying the case who had undergone pacemaker to know the migraine, only seven surgeries in the world, who has not wear the thing, now playing tennis and being an allopathic doctor, he's singing the song of an allopathic doctor. It is not based on anything. It is based on total your result. So if you are hearing me, if you are uh, listening me, so Norish.com brings you a pleasing news that migraine is curable, the lies, it comes from the Ayurveda, it comes from India. So if anybody wants anything, more information, you can talk to Norish.com, you can contact us and we will definitely make you migraine free. And I am, as an outrageous, I can make a part that we provide money back guarantee to the migraine patient. Oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do want to say that, you know, at Nourish Talk, we, we, we bring uh, the research and the science and, and uh, any speakers who come on our platform, you know, uh, they, are, they are talking about the efficacy by, by really providing the science and the research. And, and, and Valindu Prakashji is one of the top researchers in Ayurveda who has really cracked um, the, the mystery of migraine and helped thousands and thousands of people. So, so, you know, if you're listening, uh, please uh, reach out to us. You know, we will put you in touch with um, Balinduji. And um, if you want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, how long the program is, is there maybe a little bit of details, you know, when, what to expect, let's say, when a user contacts, um, how, how does it work? Like, how much time do they expect it will take for them to get, start feeling a little bit better? See, there are different category of migraine, as is ordinary migraine, like a patient come to us and they get... Uh, less than two attack in a month and they get painkiller get better so i say it is a very mild category of pain for us and such type of patient we can cure on outdoor basis online also in 40 days in four months time so four, four months. months time four months time and this could be done online or if they come to us uh, once we can help them but there's another category called chronic migraine where they're getting more than 50 days in a in a month. So those cases are uh, a little bit uh, uh, next category, advanced category. Such patients are called to our facility and we keep them from 14 to 21 days and with the help of diet, lifestyle and medicine, we make them uh, tablet free and they go back and they continue treatment from six months to nine months. The last category is a refractive migraine where all treatment has failed. They are medication or headache. Such type of patients are kept up to 40 days in the clinic and then treatment goes for nine months. But we make them in 40 days migraine free, like daily migraine free and no painkiller. So if they follow our advice, if they take advantage of our, uh, our experiences, then we cure migraine in different category, different way. So um, the, the chronic migraine uh, would be the 21 days? No, 15 days, you said. Yeah, 14 to 21 days. And the okay. refractory migraine, which is the first ever, when the patient feels that suicide is the only option for him because the patient is so terrible. So we cure them. So I said, don't make suicide. Just give us 40 days. And if you don't feel better, then I will suicide. <laughs> That's a, so so I, I just want to clarify the residential program, uh, I would call them for chronic migraine and uh, the severe migraine. Are they only available uh, in your facility in Uttarakhand or you, you mentioned that you are also partnering with other Ayurveda doctors throughout the country in India. So just can you clarify a little bit on that aspect? You see, you see other Ayurveda doctors, they don't have that infrastructure which I've created in Uttarakhand. 
So they take uh, mild cases, though maybe having 20 years, 25 years, but they're not so bad. So they are treated outdoor basis by different Ayurvedic doctors. But when they see if they are uh, uh, painkiller dependent or refractory migraine patient, so they refer this patient to our facility in Uttarakhand. As you can say that I'm very quality conscious. I'm not yeah. in a hurry. I will not like 100,000 migraine patients. I will be very happy to treat 10 patients, but I am greedy because I want to cure 10 out of 10 because my diagnosis is correct. So if a patient has any doubt that he doesn't have migraine, we will not say that we will cure you because there is a thin line between tension headache and uh, migraine mm -hmm. headache and other headache. So we are very clear if there is a patient of migraine without aura, without aura or with aura, so we make sure we assess them. And based on that, we tell them that if you are, can be treated outdoor basis in your nearby Ayurvedic doctors, we will send them. Otherwise, we will call them. So I, I do want to add that the um, the 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 mild you know the mild migraine patients, uh, what uh, you mentioned that can be uh, also done online. So I think uh, we will be collaborating uh, with the Linduji uh, to to bring that service to to a lot of people here, right, Linduji? So that it becomes you know more people become aware of that it can be treated safely and and start with the healing process. And and yes. and the yeah, and then the rest of them who had a chronic migraine or or something serious, the unfortunately you know they have to travel to India, <laughs> so so we can we can uh, you know connect you with 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 uh, part of you know their facility and and you know you can um, talk to them and and see what 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 would work best for you maybe after COVID nineteen uh, is. I is think open. this this COVID gave us opportunity because there were a few cases who were not able to travel. And they yes. requested us, then we developed a methodology that here we monitor every patient, three meals, three snacks. So our team members, we assign the job to those and they work 24 hours with them. So it is more time consuming, And but we were able to cure them. So out of COVID, while there are so many negative things have come, uh, the yes. idea of treating patients online has also emerged and it was quite successful. We treated five cases of bad cases which we never thought we will be able to treat without they come to us. So I think with this COVID, we will be able to help more people because BHL is able to take medicine and if they have day-to-day -day touch up, uh, catch up with us, in, in, stay in contact with us, we are sure that we will help them also, but they should follow our guidelines very precisely. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And to all the viewers, we will uh, send you all the details, people who have registered uh, on Zoom and watching us on uh, FB Live. This is being telecast on FB Live. Uh, you can reach out to us, but we will be sending all the details about the online consultation, the online program that Dr. Vaidya uh, Balinduji is going to share with us and we will share with all the viewers um, in, in, um, you know, in, in a few weeks, in a couple of weeks or so, or something, or maybe sooner than that. Um, all right, we are ready to wrap up. Any final comments uh, from you, Balinduji? Well, I wish uh, that whoever is listening and they have any migraine, so I, we, you believe me, I will make you ex migraine forever. <laughs> that's, that's, that is a very, very positive thought. People who have migraine, and I know I have some friends who have, uh, you know, suffered from migraine for the last, I don't know, my, actually, my, my mother, uh, who uh, suffered, and she, they will be very happy to hear this. Um, so thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for the positive thought. And uh, for to all the viewers, please share our sessions. Help us uh, spread the word of efficacy of natural therapies. We are doing that every week. With that, I would like to wrap up. And uh, thank you so much, Belinduji. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you.